Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. A reading from Acts. Peter began to speak. I really understand now that to God every person is the same. And God accepts any person who worships Him and does what is right. It is not important what country a person comes from. God has spoken to the Jewish people. God sent them the good news that peace has come through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the ruler of all people. You know what, he, what has happened all over Judea. It began in Galilee after John told the people they needed to be baptized. You know about Jesus from Nazareth. God made him the Christ by giving him the Holy Spirit and the power. Jesus went everywhere doing good things for people. Jesus healed the people that were ruled by the devil. This showed that God was with Jesus. We saw all the things that Jesus did in Judea and in Jerusalem. We are witnesses. But Jesus was killed. They put him on a cross. But on the third day, after his death, God raised Jesus to life. God let people see Jesus clearly, but Jesus was not seen by all the people. Only the witnesses that God had already chosen saw him. We are those witnesses. We ate and drank with Jesus after he was raised from death. Jesus told us to go and speak to the people. He told us to tell them that He is the one that God chose to be the judge of all people that are living and all people that have died. Every person who believes in Jesus will be forgiven. God will forgive the sins of that person through the name of Jesus. All the prophets say this is true. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Very early Sunday morning, the women came to the tomb where Jesus' body was laid. They brought the sweet-smelling spices they had prepared. A heavy stone had been put in the doorway to close the tomb. But the women found that the stone was rolled away. They went in, but they did not find the Lord Jesus' body. The women did not understand this. While they were wondering about it, two men in shining clothes stood beside them. The women were very afraid. They bowed their heads down. The two men said to the women, Why are you looking for a living person here? This is a place for dead people. Jesus is not here. He has risen from death. Do you remember what He said in Galilee? 
Jesus said that the Son of Man must be given to evil men, be killed on a cross, and rise from death on the third day. Then the women remembered the thing Jesus had said. The women left the tomb and went to the eleven apostles and the other followers. The women told them everything that happened at the tomb. These women were Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and some other women. These women told the apostles everything that happened, but the apostles did not believe what the women said. It sounded like crazy talk. The Gospel of the Lord. When Andrew Lloyd Webber's rock opera, Jesus Christ Superstar, opened on Broadway, it was picketed by members of the Billy Graham organization who had some complaints about it. Their greatest complaint was that the show said nothing about the resurrection. The final piece is an instrumental and it is simply titled John 1942. Look in your Bible, and that verse reads, And they laid Jesus in the tomb. End of story, right? That's certainly what everyone who showed up at the tomb on Sunday morning thought. They were there to finish preparation of the body that they could not do on Friday because of the rules of the Jewish Sabbath. So everyone who went to the tomb expected a dead body laid in a tomb. Each of the Gospels varies in who was there and what happened. But this one thing flows through all of them. They don't find Jesus there. In Mark's Gospel, the women come and encounter the empty tomb and run away in fear. They're terrified. In Matthew, well, women come they look, they met, they're met by messengers, one in Matthew's Gospel, who wonder why they're there looking for a dead person when there is no dead person to see. And the women and the disciples leave fearful and confused. Matthew says they leave after having heard from a messenger that Christ is risen, they leave in both fear and joy. What's going on here? In John's Gospel, Mary Magdalene is the first one to come to the tomb. She runs and tells the disciples, Peter and the beloved disciple come and inspect the tomb. And we're told that they see and they believe, but we're not told what they see or what they believe. It couldn't have been very important because John tells us they just went home. Probably turned on the TV. And Luke when the women come to the tomb and find it empty and are told by messengers that this is the place for the dead, not for the living, Christ is risen, they go home, they report it to the other followers of Jesus, and they are not believed. Silly women. 
Where did they come up with these crazy ideas? Too many soap operas. Too much People magazine. But in each account, the first thing seen is an empty tomb. And we are invited to answer the question, what does this say to you? What do you make of this? Grave robbing was quite common in those days. And there were no sealed caskets or concrete vaults. It wouldn't be that difficult to push the stone aside and take the body and maybe hold it for ransom to try to get some money out of the family. But there's an empty tomb. What do you make of that? What do you make of this day? There was a graph in the Reading Eagle this morning showing what people said they would be doing on this Easter Sunday. Number one at 57% was visit friends and family. Now, church came in second at 52%. But what do we make of the tomb and how do we respond to that reality? The truth is the only way to eternal life is through the tomb, through the expectation that the grave is not the end, but the gateway to the fullness of life. I've been in enough funerals where, touched by both sorrow and hope, people have said to me, look, didn't his finger just twitch? Didn't his chest rise a little bit? Don't we hope that they're not really dead? But death is real for God for us. But then what? What do you make of the grave? A hole in the ground into which we are deposited and left there and that's all there is? Or is there something else? What rose on Sunday was Jesus. But what also rose was the truth of the coming of the kingdom and the truth of changed lives for people who said, yes, I see this empty tomb, but I believe the announcement of the messengers. He is risen and life is changed. Bishop Marshall of the Diocese of Bethlehem has said that the only path to overcoming estrangement and sin is to die on the cross. Letting ourselves the, feel the hurts we're tempted to deny or resent or be enraged about and surviving that pain find ourselves able to love freely and also find ourselves growing in union with God. I was sitting at the bank on Friday after the Good Friday service, waiting to talk with one of the officers about my lost credit card. When the teller who was handling the drive through window called for everyone else to come over and look what was outside. There was a car at the drive-in driven by the Easter Bunny. And next to the Easter Bunny in the passenger seat was Santa Claus. How often do these two major Christian festivals become simply, I get more for me. I saw a sign a few weeks ago that said, St. Patrick is coming. 
Oh, is he in the business of bringing gifts now as well? The gift that is brought is life out of death, wholeness out of brokenness, eternal life out of limited life. Before Jesus is seen as the risen one, there are people in white who make an announcement. He is not here. He is risen. Look, the tomb is empty. He is not in the place where he was laid. Now, what do you make of that? If Jesus is truly risen, then things will change drastically for those who name Him as Lord. Is this Easter story simply another nice story? Let's go back to Bible times and try to imagine what it was like, or do we see it happening among ourselves? We can look in the grave and see a dead end. Or we can look in a grave and see the gateway to eternal life, to the fullness of everything that God has intended for us. The Easter bunny has come and gone, and the chocolate might last out the day. But the gift that comes through the empty tomb, through the crucified and risen one, that gift goes on forever. That gift is new life and opened eyes and opened hearts and hope where there was none. We bring all of our limits and our pain and our sorrow with us to the cross. And all of that is crucified with Jesus, laid in a tomb. And then it is risen and it is changed. The tomb is empty. What do you make of that? Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. On this most holy day, let us pray to God for the church, the earth, and all in need that the whole world may know the resurrection that God promises to give. O God of life, pour the life of your Son's resurrection into the churches. Make visible the unity we have in you. Show to each denomination the strengths of the others. We pray for our covenant congregation, Christ Episcopal Church, for St. John's Lutheran Church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give to the lands and seas the life of your continuing creation. What are the flowers of springtime and nurture the growing crops? Bless all who protect your plants and animals. Lord, in your mercy. 
Grant to all nations your peace of life. Keep us from war. Lead us into justice. Turn enemies into friends. We pray especially for the victims of terrorism and for repentance in those who perpetrate violence. Lord, in your mercy. Visit the needy with your compassionate life. Feed the hungry, nurse the sick, protect the weak, comfort the sorrowful, attend the dying. Here especially the persons and concerns we name before you now, aloud or in our hearts. For Bob, Annie, Bruce and Bernie, Ken, Ruth and Brian. Lord, in your mercy, raise up this entire assembly with the life of your Spirit. Reveal in our community the signs of Christ's resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, O God of life, we praise you for the faithful who have met you in death. Bring us all through death into the, your life of resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share the Lord's peace. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his followers, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ died. Christ is risen finish. We believe Christ will come down again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awake your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Lord Jesus. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The table of life is spread before you. Feast on the goodness and mercy of God. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that you have made your home with us, bringing heaven to earth in this holy meal. Fill us with your Spirit as we go from here, that we may wipe away tears, tend to those in mourning and pain, seek the healing of the nations, and bring to earth the presence of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The blessing of the Lord God Almighty, the blessing of Christ the Lamb who was slain, and the blessing of the Holy Spirit of truth be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. <laughs>